Welcome back to Iptic Tutorial Scratch Edition, where we teach you guys how to program in a visual way. Today's tutorial is our, is our part 3 of our multiple part series game. We are currently building a, an obstacle course game together. Stay tuned for part 3 where we're going to teach you guys how to add walls to your game, add music to your game, and also add a scoreboard. Thank you so much guys for your support and don't forget to subscribe and like us. <music> First things first, let's go ahead and start with our demos to show you guys what we've done and updated to this game in our part 3. So as you can see we have up here a scoreboard, here is our main character, these are fireballs and these are the walls that he's supposed to jump over. And there will be tacos falling off from the sky which are the ones that he's going to be eating. This, this uh, counter will be reset when we click the green flag to zero. But those are the goal. The goal is for the dog to eat the tacos. All right, guys, let's start with the demo. If I could end the tacos, oops. But that's the whole purpose of the game so far. The purpose of the game is to get all as many tacos as you can. And our little character turns sad when he gets touched by this fireball or the walls. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the game. So, like I've told you in the other tutorials, I am going to show you in a PowerPoint format because I feel it's easier for those of you with small devices to be able to see that. So we're going to look at the updates we have done so far. So here, uh, on the on the backdrops area, what we did is add a new variable called eat tacos. And basically we set it to zero so that when we click on our flag here, it is set to zero. And for those uh, who are new to our channel, this is part three, there is a part two and a part one. So if you want to, I suggest you start with part one, that way you can understand how this works. I go into detail how this actually works. But a quick run is just in this area we're just setting our variables that we're going to be using throughout our game. And then another thing that we do here is that we added new is this uh, video game sound. And uh, that allows it to it for it to play throughout the whole game. So let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. This one uh, was our backdrop. This is what allows our backdrop to go ahead and scroll. Um, like I showed you in part two, our backdrop is not actually a backdrop, it's a sprite. So I, I explained this in part two. There's no changes to it. Uh, it's the same thing. Just uh, look at part two for an explanation on how this actually works. And then this again is part of the other side of the backdrop. Since you wanted to scroll, you need two sprites of the same one slight modification so now for the update on our main character we've explained everything that happened up here in part one and part two the only new thing that we added to our main character is now we want our character to change into that grumpy furry looking thing if it gets touched by the wall so in our if statement we were checking for fireballs now we're checking for a wall. So if our character is touching the fireball or the wall, then we want him to turn into the grumpy looking thing and wait for five seconds. And then we switch him back to the main character. And that's all we've done to our main character so far. Now this uh, is for the jumping arrow so that you can control your character while it's jumping and being able to click to the right and make a slide to the right as you're jumping. This has not changed either. I explained this in part two of this tutorial. So check that out. Uh, so let's move to the next one. The fireball did not change and in any way, shape or form. There's the same code. And again, I explained this in, I believe part one, this is where I explained how the fireball works. 
So this is our new addition. This is our wall. And our wall, the way we do it is whenever the flag is clicked, we want it to show. And the reason we want it to show is because it it disappears from the screen when it scrolls off. So if we don't ask it to show when the flag shows, then we won't be able to see it. And then forever, we want it to be set, set X to 250. And then change to the next custom. And 250, for those of you who don't know, is let's go ahead and show you how this exactly is working. So let's go to our wall. Here's our code. And let's move a little character so you guys can see. Does the set X to 250 is basically the position of the 250 will be this. This is where we want our wall to slide from. Like it starts here and then it starts changing. It changes the custom and it keeps sliding in. So what we want it to look is like the, the character is running and a wall is approaching to it. Walls don't slide, so we just make it look like the whole screen itself is sliding with the wall. And this repetition of 100 allows us to do that. And we're changing into the negative 5x because we're going into towards this direction on this side. We're going towards the left. If we were going towards the right, then there will be a positive 5, but we're going towards the left. And if we were going to the words the towards the right, we will start our our set x at the negative time because we wanted we would want a wall on this side, so we could slide it to this, so we could go this way. And then this next custom, I made several customs. I made uh, several walls, and all I do is change the way it looks because the way it looks like is multiple walls coming at it. Like if you look at it, there's a, this wall check, it disappears, but then it comes in a different form. And that's how it makes it look like we'd have different walls. So um, that was the wall, very simple code. It's just a, a little way of showing you guys how to add more obstacles and animation to your actual um, game and again these uh, tips aren't only just for games this kind of stuff you can do videos in scratch like cartoons and episodes things like that that you want to build stories and you can add a lot of these concepts to it where where your little character gets angry because touched by something or there's walls coming or birds or things like that and then the last thing we added was these um, the taco. Let me show you guys in the bigger screen. Format. The taco. So I wanted to reward my character with something every time he touched that a specific object. And in my case, I thought tacos would be amazing to have him touch. So as long as he touches tacos, I want him to be happy. So what we did is show our actual taco. Set the size to 25% because it was huge. And then forever. And again, forever goes forever until we actually call like a stop all. So this is going to go forever. You want to change the Y by negative 5. What that means is that our, our taco will be falling down by negative 5 every time. Forever like this. It will be going like this down. And if the Y position is less than a negative 170, which will be somewhere on the bottom, then we change the Y by 170. So we bring it up on the top again. So this here, and, it, and we do it at a, ra in a random position. This allows it to look like it's falling. And when we get to the bottom, it will come back up in a different position and fall again. And these can be used also for like, if you're making a story, you can put raindrops in your story make it look like it's raining uh, and then uh, right here if uh, if we touch Ben which Ben is our main character then we want the popping sound so if, as, if our taco touches Ben we want the popping sound and we want to change our eat, eat the eating tacos by one 
Then we want to hide the taco, wait one second, and then bring our, our taco to an X and Y random position, and then show it again. And we do that forever. So that's how it looks like it's raining tacos. And the basic concept was I wanted to, again, reward my character with something and increment the score. And that is all. I basically want to do maybe the next one will be showing you guys how to connect it to a Makey Makey. So that you guys can play more like a remote game control kind of style. And then I may or may not do, maybe if he touches like the wall or the firewall, he loses tacos. We'll see. We'll, we'll take away his food, I guess. It sounds bad, but <laughs> um, let's see. So... So basically, with, this was a very quick um, showing you guys how to add more elements to your game. We added a wall that if our character touches, he gets into that angry mode position. Uh, we also added the ability for the wall that, to look like if our character is running towards it, but our wall is not moving. We are. It makes it look like that. Uh, we added a, a reward system where our character can eat tacos and gain points. And I will have, to, I'll put up counter like a max amount of tacos that our character can eat. And when we reach that amount, then our game ends. That will be something that we'll add for our, our fourth part of this tutorial. Um, and then uh, I'll probably also add some, like I said, some taking away points if you get touched by the ball or the wall. And uh, that's it for today, guys. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Make sure to subscribe and like us. If you guys have questions, comments, please let us know. And thank you so much for those of you who have been sharing your projects on the comments below. I love watching them and looking at them and seeing what you guys are creating. And uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Bye.